Greetings, Earthborn Rangers. Welcome to our second quick guide, a quick series of videos in which we will explore different elements of the Earthborn Rangers card game. Today's quick guide topic is the difference between exhaust and ready, particularly looking at how exhaustion is used in player card effects, as well as how exhaust versus ready status interacts with path cards. So let us begin by jumping into the rulebook, which has a great description laying out the difference between exhaust and ready. In the rulebook, as you can see, it makes it pretty clear how it works as a game concept. Exhaustion is kind of like the T word from a certain bigger card game, uh, but in this card game, it's called exhaust. And exhaust is used in a variety of ways and for a variety of instances. Most importantly, it is a timing trigger. And a timing trigger is for things that you do that you have to initiate. So a trigger is something, basically a way that you trick the, or trigger the game into operating. And so with exhaustion, Triggering a card uh, with exhaustion requires basically turning it 90 degrees. So take the Infusion Canteen, a card that I'm super eager to play with, allowing them to use the Canteen in play to get energy. However, they have to first exhaust the card. And when they exhaust the card, the Ranger in question will take a sip from the Canteen, but that will be the only time per turn you can use it unless you can ready it for some manner so that the cost of the uh, gear to use it is to turn it to the right 90 degrees. And once you've done that, you can't do it unless it's ready. The Infusion Canteen is more or less usable once per turn, once it's in play, allowing you to get a total of three extra energy over the basically three turns including the turn you play it before it is out of water, unless you can somehow add more sips or more tokens to it. So let's look at other player cards or other ways that ready matters. Take, for example, everyone's favorite good doggy, Oru. And Oru lets us now look at some interesting ways in which exhaust interacts with other effects on cards. Oru has two abilities that can be triggered. One triggered through exhaust, the other triggered through a skill test that uh, doesn't involve exhausting. So let's look at how that works. Say, for example, we use the top, our very trusty uh, canine companion does its shepherd uh, thing to move a, being move a being either along the way or within reach, and then adds two progress counters on them. What is our next way to use or can we pet our good doggy and the answer is yes because the pet action doesn't interact with exhaustion at all abilities on cards that are exhausted are still active the only difference is uh, if it's exhausted is you can't trigger abilities that require exhaustion are there other examples well let's see Let's look at other kinds of player cards that might be, seem a little bit weird to uh, us when we first start the game. The most important one is going to be the roll card. Roll cards are persistent, exhaustible abilities. Rolls can be used for one of two things. Uh, one is to take a second action if you're in a multiplayer game back to back. So this way you can basically kind of mess with the turn order a little bit and go again or you can use the roll card power, which I imagine is what most of us will do. In the case of the Undaunted Seeker, a type of explorer, we exhaust them and they let us dodge a card during a test. We can look at a different kind of issue that we might come up with cards, not unlike Oru, is another, I imagine, favorite companion that will be traveling with a lot of us through the valley is Pakoto the Ferret, whose ability is to exhaust to do a couple of different things and that is to discard a, a progress token from Podoko and then add two progress tokens to a different being and one token to an aid card 
And we might ask yourself, well, how will we use Pocodo if there is no innate way to get uh, the progress tokens on them? And the good news is you can always use the uh, basically the, the basic action to connect with Pocodo. And that does it for our look at player cards and exhaust and ready. Now let's switch over to everyone's favorite card type, the path cards. The cards that will provide us with our uh, challenges and really be an important component of exploring the valley. So first I want to mention in play and active. Both are game concepts. In play is pretty self-explanatory. Active is much more complicated, especially in multiplayer games, and I'll do a quick guide on that. But let's just say for the purpose of this video that all of the ready effects we're going to check are active. So, so let's look for a path card that's going to be ready. Oh, a Prowling Wallhound, perfectly on time, as this is probably also going to be the first Predator we encounter on our first days as Rangers. I think the Prowling Wallhound volunteering for us is a uh, perfect example for what we will deal with regarding active and ready versus active and exhausted. So let's see what happens if we say we're to take a test um, on a piece of equipment in our play area. Say we're testing awareness, we happen to pull a zero. So maybe we succeeded. Now we have to do the challenge effects. In this case, the challenge card provides us a sun icon, and we can then therefore look for all sun icons on the active and ready cards, starting with the surroundings and the weather going on all down to the prowling wall hunt itself with its sun icon telling us to ready another prowling wall hunt, which if we're in single player and this is the first path card we've drawn, probably not a big deal, but this could be a big deal for multiplayer games. Now let's look at what happens when we have an exhausted Prowling Wallhound, either because this was the second Predator drawn and the Prowling Wallhound comes into play exhausted, therefore, or if someone avoided it using an awareness test. So say we were to do the exact same test we just did on a piece of gear in our play area. We again pull awareness zero, but now we have to check our challenge icons. We see the dreaded crest, which will always have the worst challenge effects. Indeed, if this Prowling Wolfhound was ready, and we had three fatigue, this would be a terrible effect. But it is exhausted, so the actual crest effect does not trigger. And that's the basics of exhaust and ready for path cards. If they're active and they are ready, you do the crest icon from the uh, challenge effect that you pull. If they're exhausted, and you don't. As well, if they're exhausted, you don't have to worry about their presence fatiguing you. So this is the basics for how to handle path cards. If they're in play and inactive, they don't bother you at all, and that'll be a whole separate video. So let's move on. Thank you very much for taking this journey with me through Exhaust and Ready. Uh, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, and I'll see you later.